Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video, I'm going to take a look at Agro Overload Shaman. You may remember that I looked into this deck very early in Rastakan's Rumble, but now the nerfs have been done, so it's a post nerf meta, and there have been some interesting developments with this deck, and I think it's much better right now than it was even early on. Compared to the build that I played early in Rastakan, I have ditched the Knife Jugglers, I've removed the Feral Spirit, and I've removed Blood Mage Talnos. And in those slots there's a pair of Glacial Shards, the second copy of Spirit of the Frog, and there is Zentimo. And I think this deck right now feels really solid and very fluid. Spirit of the Frog is absolutely the superstar of the deck. This is just an incredibly strong card in this archetype. Whenever you cast a spell, draw a spell from your deck that costs one more. So you start the chain, you can go from Zap to Lightning Bolt to Rock by the Weapon to Lava Burst. There's no four mana spells in this deck, so you, the chain ends at three. But you can go zero, one, two, three, and you can draw a lot of cards with Spirit of the Frog. Also, making good use of the stealth. Against some opponents, you can confidently play the spirit and unload spells on the following turn. They don't have any way to remove it. Against other opponents, you might be scared that they can remove it, so then you try to get it on the board and do spells immediately on the same turn. And Spirit of the Frog simply allows you to dig for so much burst damage that that's what wins a ton of games. Obviously, in addition to Spirit of the Frog, there are the classic things that actually deal the face damage. Doomhammer and Rock by the Weapon is one of your main combos. And then there's Electro Storm Surge and Lava Burst. These are the big ways to deal damage later in the game, and very early in the game you're looking for stuff like Firefly into Earth and Might, creating a 3-4 that can be pretty tricky to remove, or even Voltaic Burst Earth and Might, creating a 3-3 three, three and a 1-1 one, one, that can then be used quite effectively as well. And whenever you have a chance to make an unbound elemental that can start growing, that's really good. And if you're facing tokens or other stuff that you can want to remove, then Thunderhead and getting those sparks with Rush, just sacrificing the sparks over and over to destroy the board and let the Thunderhead and other minions go face. Works even better if you can throw in a Flame Tongue Totem to give them a little bit of a buff, even though the sparks are summoned on both sides of the Thunderhead, so with a single Flame Tongue Totem you can always only get to use one of them with the Flame Tongue. In this build, I think Zentimo is actually probably the weakest card, because it's a legendary card, so you're not very guaranteed to draw it. You rarely save spells for it. There have been some instances where if I had held on to something like an Earth and might a little bit longer, I might have been able to get more value from Zentimo. And sometimes I have been able to pull off this Zentimo, Earth and might plus two, plus two into three minions kind of place. So even Zentimo is not performing poorly. But it's probably the slot that if I found a good card to take in, I would use that slot for that tech card. In the current meta, the weakest matchups for this deck are the OTK DK Paladin. They have a lot of healing, it's very hard to overcome all of that. And then there's Steeds and there's Liness, and it's just very hard to push through all of that. So in that matchup, Silence might be able to do something, so I have considered uh, Chuck. And the other matchup that's pretty difficult is Spell Hunter, because if they get the Spell Stone early, that 12-12 stats, you just can't raise that with the Aggro Shaman. That said, I have won games against both of these archetypes, but I don't have a positive win record against either of those. Overall, I have a 64% win rate with this deck. Other Hunter archetypes, for example, are not as difficult as Spell Hunter is. When you mulligan with this deck, you're generally looking for an explosive start. Firefly, Earth and Might is pretty much the ideal start in many matchups. Sometimes Flame Dunk Totem if the opponent cannot easily remove it. And with that even something like Voltaic Burst might do. Then you're really trying to evaluate what kind of opponent you're facing. Is Likim going to help you with board control? Or if it's something slower and you need a bit more punch, then stuff like Spirit of the Frog to get the card draw going, or Unbound Elemental to build a big threat can also be good choices. And if it's going to be very token heavy, then Thunderhead and Zap is really the best way to start answering token decks. Overall, I think this deck is a lot of fun to play. It's an aggro deck. I feel that it's much better now than it was early in Rustakan's Rumble. But it has a couple of weak matchups that are fairly popular, the OTK, DK, Paladin and Spellhunter. 
And spell hunter is especially popular in the higher climbing ranks. So if you're in that spell hunter heaven, then this deck will not do very well for you. It does much better if the hunter archetypes are more in the line of death rattle hunter. If you enjoy this content, then please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more. And now let's go take a look at aggro shaman in action. All right, let's see. Let's see what comes out of this. But it's possible. So I think it's all good. Another OTK Paladin who keeps almost the entire hand. I think this is a Flame Dunk Totem turn. Let's play the Flame Dunk Totem hit face. Like just play another Flame Elemental or play the Hero Power. He probably has Call to Arms in that hand. Okay, he chose to coin that Tekal, that was interesting. If I use my Voltaic Burst, that means that I cannot use Spirit of the Frog to draw. But I think I have to do that anyway. We go with the Voltaic Burst. And I'm killing that Tekal. Yeah, I do kill the Tekal. To protect the Flame Tank Totem a little bit. He used the coin so he cannot play True Silver Champion this turn. He also cannot play Consecration, or he cannot play Pyromancer into something. He can top deck Righteous Protector, though. That is something he can do. I don't want to commit the Spirit of the Frog yet. But I think I want to kill the minions, because there's so many things that he can use to kill the Flame Tank Totem if I don't kill the minions. On the other hand, are there really? Well, Blessing of Kings is there, of course. True Silver Champion is there. Well, I can't play around True Silver Champion anyway, so it is actually better to hit face. Because there's nothing that I can do to protect myself against True Silver Champion. So this way I get a bit more damage into the face first. There's probably going to be a call to arms next turn. So I think I want these against that call to arms here. And I do spend the last Likim charge to his face. I think this is correct. There can of course also be some Pyromancer plays. It's either or. There's not enough mana to play Call to Arms into some Pyromancer moves. Or he can top deck the Consecration. Excellent top decking every turn now. So probably the Call to Arms will come next. I don't want to commit the Spirit of the Frog, because Spirit of the Frog is my card draw. Once I find a spell, I'll use that with the Spirit of the Frog to draw. Let's go with these and then I can Doom Hammer next turn. He still has... he kept everything and he still has it all there. And now he can also get steeds, which is kind of a big deal. And this is also pretty good. So now I go with the Doom Hammer, which will make this one grow a little bit. Doom Hammer can handle the minions. Well, not completely because of the Divine Shield, but for the most part. It can hit there. It can hit there. I guess I will use the 1-1 one, one to take that one down. I think that's fine. Then I'll play the Flame Dunk Totem here in the middle, so that these both go face. We're trying this approach now. So I don't leave him with a minion that he can steed. The only thing that he can steed is if he gets another Righteous Protector. Okay, there's an Equality Clear into his second Righteous Protector. And now if he has a Steed, I can't remove all the Steed targets. Well, I barely could with this one, but I don't think that's worth it then. Because this can also just win the game later on. So 
So the real question here is, do I commit the spirit of the frog on the board? I have just seen an equality, I have seen a pyromancer, I have seen a consecration. I will not be overloaded next turn anyway. There are no four mana spells that I can draw. I will have nine mana. So I can do one, two, three. It's possible. So it's incorrect to play the Spirit of the Frog with both Flame Tongue Totems gone. Oh, he had Crystals with Kangor out there. That's pretty sweet. With Flash of Light and a True Silver Champion, well that's really sweet then. It's very tough when they draw this perfectly. Now the Spirit of the Frog. But I have to drop a Lightning Bolt here, right? And do I have lethal? 10 plus... The eight, I have 18, but he's... Yeah, I don't have lethal because he has Flash of Light and the True Silver Champion. If he had only one, I would be able to kill him. Well, if I draw Rock Biter. If I draw Earth and White, then obviously not. That's going to be 2 plus 4. That's going to be 6 healing next turn. At least, there might be more. I think I have to let him have that 6 healing next turn. I think I have to f let him have that 6 healing next turn. And try this approach. So he goes to 10. Which means that then I have to roll spell damage or I have to top deck Electra. Unless he has even more healing. But if I start killing this, I think that puts me in an even worse position. Let's see. So I have 9 damage. 25% for lethal. That unfortunately is not lethal. Unfortunately, that is not lethal. And if he has Shervala, he wins then. And if he has Shervala, he wins. He has at least to 8. He might also win with Steed or something. He has at least 2-8. But actually, this time he lost. I might try with this, but I don't know if I can beat those decks. How do you beat Q block? You would have to just have to punch them in the face before the first Void Lord comes. After that, you're toast. Unless you have Ur Urchuk in the deck, but I don't. Some of these builds do run Urchuk. So it's not even, so it's probably cube. He might have a slow hand. We'll see about that. Probably go an Unbound Elemental next turn. Getting killed on that 4 health is... A little bit difficult for Warlock at times. And it's going to start growing. It's only going to grow from there. I kind of hope he has some minion that I could then do, like Spirit of the Frog Zap. But of course if he has a like Librarian and the next turn plays a Spellstone that works out nicely. We'll see. That is not a bad line either. I mean, I have the option to simply Earth and Might, the Unbound, get it to 6 health. And I think I like that. I could make it even bigger, but that would require using a Lightning Bolt now. Then I can't use Lightning Bolt for board clear. 
Or I could do Spirit of the Frog Lightning Bolt. This will be at 5. It will almost force a Hellfire. I think that sounds pretty good. Practically forcing a Hellfire is something that I like as a concept. In order to get a spell stunt, you need to be able to damage himself. If he just plays like a giant, I can just freeze a giant. Oh no, now he can have the spell stone. I could have played around Cobalt Librarian's coin spell stone with the Earth and Might. I thought I didn't have to. Okay, he did not actually have a spell stone. Then we're going to go in with the Earth and Mites. Double Earth and Might on this and hit face. Now he might have a spell stone. But if he had a spell stone, he would have played it last turn. Coin spell stone was available after that librarian. I just had to read that there was no librarian because he would have played librarian very early on if he had one. He had to be a very recent top deck for there to be any chance for librarian. That's why I thought this was going to be enough. I even have the Electra Lava Burst now. Well, Electro Lava Burst is not quite lethal now, is it? No, it is not. It's too off. He lost the Ciliax, he lost the Lackey. Very, very interesting game. I could also just play a Servant of Kalimos here. Without the effect. I think it's strong enough without the effect. Spirit is not guaranteed lightning bolt, so... So I think this is the line. He already spent one defile. He lost one lackey. He could have another lackey and packed. But that's unlikely. Now that he had the tap, I think he just lost. I might try with something like this, but this might also be too slow. Scary. Let's see, but I have to assume even Shaman. Even Shaman is the only Shaman archetype that is really seeing play. It's not even Shaman. So what is it then? Now I'm completely puzzled. I have no idea what this can be. We could be like in a mirror. But that also seems very unlikely. Would be interesting to be in a mirror. No, it is something more control oriented. I think I'm going out the Thunderhead here. Except that mana tide. Also trade away the one one. So if he runs mana tide, he's control oriented. So he could be like an overload shaman. Something like that. Serenite chain gang. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Who did not get the memo? So it's just Centimo and Zap. Next turn he can Volcano though. So maybe it's too early to sacrifice Centimo. I think it's too early to sacrifice Centimo here. But I do want to play around Lightning Storm. So I don't want to get any damage on the Thunderhead. Even though one of the damage would be healed, but I still prefer having it at 5 instead of 4. There's no way to play around Volcano. Another Chain Gang. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. So I can't quite kill the chain gangs. as much damage on them as I can though. Probably want to glacial shard a chain gang too. And then I try to roll 50% to get a taunt totem. I missed that roll. Because if I had succeeded in that roll I would have still remained good against good against the lightning storm. Whereas now Lightning Storm can beat me if he rolls 50% on this one. Or it can clear the board. It didn't clear the board yet. Okay. So I can... So okay, this is fine. This is fine. Now with the Doom Hammer. I have a board clear here with the Doom Hammer. Because these fellows are going to kill these. The Doom Hammer will kill the others. Alright. So I think we're protecting the Thunderhead for the time being here. We've seen both Glacier Shards, we've seen both Chain Gangs. I have Centimo and I have Electra if I can find the right tools to use those with. Why is he playing Life Drinker? I don't think I understand. I think this Thunderhead will be sacrificed. Play another Thunderhead. And the flame elemental and I start punching him in the face a little bit with the Doom Hammer. Looks like Yeah, this is EU. Are there even six thousand legends on NA? I don't know. NA used to, usually has had so few legends. This really looks like it's Shadow Walk. This there might be a twist to this. It's still possible. Spirit of the Frog, but no spells. I have Electra, Centimo, and Spirit of the Frog when I have no spells. Man, that feels bad. I really would like to get some spells. But I also don't want to play the Spirit of the Frog out there yet. He might still beat me. I mean, Hagata might just outvalue me. Hagata and healing and board clears. He can beat me with that. And he actually has a fire elemental in the deck. You belong to the now. I have no idea why he wanted to return it back to his hand though, but I have to assume there's some kind of a reason. Well, now it's time to play the spirit. I guess I lightning bolt that fellow. Picking up Earth and Might is not exactly what I had in mind. But that's going to be Centimo Earth and Might turn anyway then. I knew Centimo Earth and Might. But do I use the charges on the doom hammer put him down to 18 well that kind of sets up for potential lethal but of course finding the rock biter would be so good i think i still need to use these charges now try to set up for something here he has a big and expensive fire elemental in hand there's only 14 power on the board, so this can still be cleared with a volcano. But if it's not cleared, then there might be an Electro Lava Burst type of clear. And now it's only 14 with the Centimo gun. 17 with the Likim. Oh, and I'm not the Life Drinker, so 17 is not enough even. Haha, <laughs> well, this would have given me the rock by the weapon. And the lethal. I 
I didn't believe. I can have 15 next turn. Do I die? I don't think I'll die. I could also just use the Lava Burst this turn, right? Yeah, it's acceptable. Put him down to six. So he gets to nine, and he needs one more point of healing. Otherwise I can do the Electro Lava Burst. Plus I could play the top deck like a Lightning Bolt. Because I played Lava Burst last turn. What about Sihi in this deck? No, this deck is way too fast to use Sihi. You don't want to get into a position where you would want to use Sihi. Sihi is more like a mid-range card. This is very, very aggro deck. This is much too aggro to use Sihi. He needs one point of healing. Or lethal. Does he have it? That Lardanosus was obviously a great top deck. But he still needs one point of healing or he needs lethal. Does he have it? I mean, you could at least tell me. Didn't have the healing. Alright, we won. There was actually even Lightning Bolt top deck. So, by doing what I did last turn, I uh, enabled myself to have the Lightning Bolt. But then again, the turn before, I did not believe sufficiently and saved the Doom Hammer for the Rock Pider. Feral Spirit, two Knife Jugglers. And Talnos. Yeah, I've changed four cards for this build. I think I like it now. Recaimed all the ranks you initially lost. You're pretty much here. And hi, General. Oh, not the Righteous Protector. It's always the Righteous Protector, isn't it? That's rough. No! Well, it dies, but it can still deal damage. It can take away the Divine Shield, maybe. Is this an earth in my turn, I think? So we do Voltaic Burst. Into earth and might on one of these. So that we get to keep a minion. And we also get a new elemental. And I can kill these minions. So I get to keep a tree too. This is an OTK Paladin, of course. So lots of nasty things coming. Good like coin true silver if he has perfect cards here. He has perfect cards here. What's the record in this deck? We can take a look after this game. This one looks like a loss now, but... He's just going to kill the Menacing Nimbus too. And that and Licky is not, not that impressive either. So let's see what we can pick up from this one. We pick up an extra Electra. That might be good enough, but I don't think it is. Oh, come on. He has some seriously good stuff right now. But he still has to kill this minion. I'm not going to have to Doomhammer down the gang more. That just has to happen right now. Before he starts healing a lot with it. I mean, now he only gets two healing. Because I have not been able to deal any damage yet. But at least we get that one down now. Oh, come on, he had absolutely perfect cards. These cards were really sick. I don't have an Overlord spell to go with Thunderhead either. And next turn he can play a Steed. And if he has Steed, then that's game over. There's no way for me to raise that. So, he must not have a Steed. We'll work from there. He will not have a Steed. That's a starting point. 
there's no other way to play this game but to make certain assumptions that you need for your routes. And the assumption here is that there is no steed. If there's a steed, I'm lost. But he had perfect cards, so that's quite a good of an upside. There is a steed. Have I lost? Well, if he goes face... Maybe there's still something I can do. Too bad this summons on them on both sides. It just makes it so much harder to use the flame tongue totem effectively. But I actually do get through the steed. Actually make it through the steed, but he's still at full health. So I guess that's still not going to be enough. I guess that's still not going to be enough, but we made a valiant effort here. A little bit overloaded. In theory, Electro Rock by the Lava Burst would be 20, but I don't actually have 20. And... Yeah. Let's see. The small upside is that there's no weapon removal in this particular build. But... Oh, a timeout. That's so powerful. That is so powerful. If he has steed, he can always just hero power steed. If he has any kind of equality play... Let's see what totem I roll. <laughs> I keep rolling this one once. Because I have the option also to freeze the silver hand recruit. He can always get a steed going anyway. So this is the correct line. Now this one cannot be killed with a true silver champion. Pyromancer clears are always a thing though. He did have another steed. That is pretty annoying. He didn't have an equality then. What if I do Electra Rockbiter? Then I can punch through the Pyromancer with my face. He does not have an equality. That would be 5 mana. Then I could try to roll Healing or Taunt, or I could play the Unbound Elemental. I mean, if he had the equality, he would have spent it, right? Or maybe not. Maybe he saves on the equality. But also have just consecration. Lightning can strike twice. I think this is needed. This pushes through the second steed and leaves me with a formidable board. He could have Uther. Uther would be great, obviously. He could have even consecration would be pretty nice. He has Uther. He keeps having perfect cards. But we keep trying to fight his perfect cards. If he has consecration, he could just set up lethal by going face. I think that would be a smart thing for him to do. If he has a consecration in hand. And that's completely possible. We obviously freeze his face to prevent healing. Do I also just lava burst him in the face? Yeah, I do actually. Well, at this point, we are all in. This is what you could say being all in is all about. Now we are very, very much all in. So, if he has equality then obviously he wins from here. But we have seen both Steeds, and we have seen both Pyromancers. 
Oh no. Not a Linessa with double steeds. Well, he had absolutely super cards. That was incredible. And I don't have silence in this deck. So there's no way for me to push through that Linessa and the double steeds. No, there is no way. Yeah, there are no outs. Okay. I might keep the Earth and Might. I assume big spell mage. Then I can try to if I can find like Firefly or something to go with the Earth and Might. Unfortunately, I cannot. Mage kept two cards. Not an odd mage. So it can be big spells or it can be some kind of aggro. It's OTK. Alright. Well, now I know what we're up against, but unfortunately my hand is very, very slow. And I roll the only totem that he can ping away. That's tough. And he can still ping it away. I think I need to do Firefly into Earth and Might here. This one cannot be pinged away even if that Arcanologist hits into it. He will need something more. So I believe this is the line. You look very oh, those mirror images can come in handy. Let's see what I can pick up from the Nimbus. Electra, Electra is nice. I think I'll Earth and Might this one again. Just to push more face damage. I know he has Ice Barrier in hand, and I know he has Mirror Image in hand. He cannot trade away the 5-6, and I have a Doom Hammer that can kill the Mirror Image and allow the 5-6 to push face. But he can play like the Mirror Image plus Ice Barrier this turn, of course. And it's pretty strong, because it still leaves him with more health even after the Doom Hammer play. Trades away the Nimbus. But now I have that bonus Electra. There's the mirror image. I was expecting the... I was actually expecting the Ice Barrier to come down. But I'm happy it didn't. Now the Doom Hammer will deal with the mirror images and I get to push 5 to the face. But I guess the Ice Barrier will come down this turn. Hi, JC. And I am a wee bit overloaded at the moment. So that is the Ice Barrier. So he's at 27. 5, 9. Puts him down to 18. That's 16. 4, 6, 7, 8 mana. I don't have it for next turn yet. But if I do frog... Frog into lightning bolt, I'm guaranteed to draw rock biter. And that's what I'm going for here. I'll push this 4 damage to there. And there will be the Ice Barrier, of course. I know there's an Ice Barrier. Next turn I will have 7 mana available. He probably cannot freeze my face. And with 6 mana he shouldn't be able to kill the Spirit of the Frog yet. Even if he has, like, Blizzard here. That doesn't kill the Spirit of the Frog. So I'm guaranteed to keep drawing. I'm also guaranteed to draw Rock Biter from Lightning Bolt. So double Rock Biter would be 16, 19 damage. Well, it's unlikely that I can actually push 19, but it's nice to think that I could. But what does he have up there? I don't mind a Doomsayer. Like he 
He's a 22. I mean that's 6, 8, 16, 19, 24. So this is just lethal, isn't it? If I push face with this, then I double rock by the my face. And then I hit him in the face a lot. And then I hit him in the face some more. And there. I think I'll try with this. This deck just doesn't have an answer. It's another OTK mage. This is OTK mage number three. OTK mage number three. That and if I were to coin the spirit, I mean coin after spirit, I would get another one mana spell from that. So many good lines to take. I think I'll earn might now. Just to hit face. I'm not even zapping that. So far this is perfect. Is it time to play the Spirit of the Frog now? Yeah, I think it is. I'm not gonna do Frog, Coin, Zap, draw two one mana spells. What do I want to do next? And play more Earth and Mites. This one goes face. It's time to lightning bolt face. I will have three mana next turn. Lightning bolt face seems appropriate. Let's just let's just draw a lot of cards right now. Because I want to find my burst. I will have only two mana next turn. But I can use the two mana on an earth and might. Unless he finds exactly Scorch from its primordial glyph, I guess. I can still use it on an Earthen Might, I mean, that's not impossible. Or I can use it on a Lickim. Push 3. Put him down to 18. This Earthen Might would pull a Lava Burst from the deck, though. I think we're Earthen Mighting here. I want to draw that Lava Burst. Looking for a Doom Hammer. Banana fellow, cool. <laughs> There's a Centimo, but I used the Earthen Mites already. I can guarantee it through another Rock Biter. With the Voltaic Burst here. We draw another Rock Biter, right? I'm quite sure we do. Play the lick him. I can sacrifice these two into his minion. It's fine, I didn't like them anyway. This goes face. Lick him goes face. Time to play some of the smaller stuff out there. Okay, we've got him down to 14. When he's just to pick up a Frostbolt to freeze me. That's nice. That's nice, I suppose. There's the Doomhammer. If I don't overload now, I can do Doomhammer next turn. There's no lethal, right? I don't think there's a lethal here. None that I can see. So I could do Benevolent Gin. I can actually do Benevolent Gin here. And I can trade away the Talnos. I can afford to trade away the Talnos. 
I can rock bite at this one to hit him in the face, put him down to nine, so that I don't have to worry about I don't have to worry about ice barriers. So I can just do Electro Lava Burst for lethal. Or Rock Biter. Doomhammer Rock Biter. Lots of ways to do it. But this one is a pretty good way. There. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.